Well, it turned. Pretty hard stuff. I don't have a live center and I don't like using a dead center so I'm going to use this socket and a ball bearing to uh, try to steady the part and stop it from vibrating too much. actually work somewhat. I don't know what this metal is. I got it from, uh, I don't know, kind of like a thrift sale or a yard sale type thing. So, yeah. So I'm trying to build this onto the end of here so that I can thread the boring head onto the end of that. Uh, so I need to get to a diameter of, go to inches, we got it zeroed, 1.495.5 deep.
I got the part to final dimension. Now I just need to make sure this shoulder is nice and square. Slide the tailstock out and to make sure that I don't have the threads too deep because this part here is only so deep there. I don't have much to play with, so yeah. So I haven't done a whole lot of single point threading or threading with one of these guys. I ended up making this tool, yeah, when I bought my first lathe, which was in, I don't remember, 2015 or 2016. Anyway, I'm gonna try this. This metal's pretty hard, but I'll use lots of oil and turn it slow. Changing the gearing on this to cut the right threads is fun for a couple of reasons. Extra reason for me is because I can't actually open the cover and access the gears until I slide the mill out. And on this model, you can't change uh, the gearing without actually physically changing gears. So there's a little chart on here. And the chart tells me, uh, yeah, for 18 threads per inch, where are you? 18 threads per inch, I need these gears and then I need to set the speed to uh, what is it C A2 as you can see moving it out is quite a pain in the butt fortunately it's small enough that I can do it myself here you can see that I'm removing the high range belt and installing the low range belt I need to do this to be able to cut at a slow enough speed to cut threads, otherwise you get yourself in a lot of trouble. Changing the gears on this thing on a good day is pretty difficult because the chart isn't very clear. When I was doing it all the time, I used to be able to figure it out pretty quickly, but it took me about half an hour to actually do this gear change, so I won't put you through all that. pretty hard for me to get a good camera shot here because I don't have room to get in and there's not a lot of light and stuff but I'm gonna run a scratch pass make sure that my thread count is right and then or my thread pitch rather this isn't sheets it's a threaded part and then yeah I'm gonna cut some threads so let's get to it this is tricky I don't thread a lot so I'm gonna leave the uh, cross slide engaged and just use the on off. This lathe doesn't have a break so I'm very likely going to run it into there a few times but oh well. Alright it would help if I actually turned it into zero. Thread pitch is correct. I'm going to put some oil on it now. Lots of oil. And then I'm going to turn this out every time. Uh, back, reverse it out. Go back to zero on the dial. And then turn it in a couple thousandths here. And yeah, hope for the best. Hey, I didn't run into anything. Put that back to zero. Turn this in another couple thousandths. <laughs> Those last few threads are kind of scary. I don't know if the camera can see, but my tool is really, really close to running into the part, so... Yes? I 
think we might have it. <laughs> Very close. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to just take a couple of cleanup passes, but yeah, just a couple of more thou and it's gonna, it's gonna do it. I'm gonna do the final passes by hand because it seemed to help get rid of the chatter marks some. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got it, yes, <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to clean it up a bit with a wire brush, clean that stuff off with some brake clean or whatever, so that means... Nice. Okay, now we gotta see how deep of a cylinder I can bore, which is determined by basically, yeah, here to the chuck. So I can bore a cylinder that is seven and a quarter, well, seven inches deep if I use the side one, but I'll probably use the one that goes in through here. So realistically, I can bore a cylinder that is, I guess it depends too on how wide these are. But anyway, let's just say nine inches. So I can bore out my cylinders using this tool. The tool is completed. All I'm waiting for now is an angle plate and then I can mount the cylinder on here and see if this thing is going to do what I need it to do. Ordinarily, when you're boring out cylinders, you order the pistons in advance, you measure the pistons, bore your cylinders to within a few thousandths, and then finish up with a hone to get your proper clearance. What I'm going to do is mount the cylinder on here, take a few thousandths off, and check to see if the tool is leaving any deep gouges or really bad chatter marks or anything like that. If the tool is working properly and I've decided I'm going to do it myself, then I can order the pistons based on that. If something happens and the cylinder gets gouged by testing this tool, then I can order the next size up piston and send them off and have them done properly. With that being said, I am quite hopeful that this is gonna work. And if this doesn't work, I might even try making a separate tool that is held by the tailstock. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. When I was just a young lad, we used to hang around at Johnson's Creek, down Johnson's Creek, and the old men there would come over and say, Hey, boys. Hey, boys, I see you're fishing with a stick and a string. And they would laugh at us. They would laugh at us and, and call us names, and then they would go on telling their story, telling their story about how real men fish with nets. And, and, and every now and then one of them would get real, real liquored up there and sing us a song and it's called, it's, it's, I think it was called beating a fish over the head with a stick or something like that. Anyway, it goes, it goes a little something like this. It's called, it goes, I used to buy the build a boat and I used to buy the chairs, sir. I used to buy the kitchen to fish and bring them home to laser. I don't need your maggotty fish, they're no good for winter. I can get some better than this down in Bonner Vista. I get the fish in that boat, I pull him out of the net. I pick him out of the net and I beat him over the head with a stick. Anyway, I think that's how it goes. And uh, yeah, the old men, they'd get right liquored up there and they'd just be singing the old song.